Okay, so some of the best stories are never told. There are some incredible people out there with incredible projects that you'll never hear about. So I wanna use this project and the next 10 minutes, nine minutes and 43 seconds, um, as, as a call for participation, but also uh, use it as an opportunity to discuss uh, two stories and how we can add another dimension using network data analysis. So in recent years, um, a lot of, uh, there's been a lot of innovation in this field and there's application and softwares, they're really sophisticated. And just within the past few years, it, it's not limited to massive organizations, big industry or government agencies. These can be used um, relatively cheaply and simply to, be, to add a layer to projects and stories. So full disclosure, um, have you ever been somewhere where you don't belong? Show of hands. Sometimes in life you have to go places where you don't belong. So I actually do not have a background in computer science or data analysis. I study economics and history. I love stories. Uh, but I realized that um, data is ubiquitous. We have to live with it whether we like it or not. So we might as well, even if from an amateur standpoint, find a way to make it interesting and meaningful. So that's what I'm gonna try to do today and try to do with this project. Everybody likes a good story. So I'll be talking about uh, two stories today. So one is the World Atlas of Sands. You're probably wondering what that is. We'll get to that. Um, and it's by Catalan Stefan. He's at the uh, Technical University in Dresden. And we'll finish up with uh, the second story which is by Peter Bell, and it's called Go Figure. So first of all, we'll start off um, with the World Atlas of Sands. Basically, I was online, just uh, I have a, an interest in physical geography, so I stumbled across this site. Um, it's basically one guy who had a passion for collecting sand, and at first I was kind of like, okay, you know, whatever you're into, but uh, <laughs> I dug a bit deeper and actually contacted him, and you know, I realized that he had this passion. He just started collecting on his own, storing sand in his apartment, um, and then he kind of unintentionally developed this network of people who would send him their samples from all over the world. So he has since developed a more sophisticated system for cataloging the sand, so it's not all over his apartment, um, but he has thousands and thousands of samples. So I asked, you know, hey, could you, could you send me that information? Um, and we'll get to that in a little bit. But uh, one thing I really liked about this project is that it started small. The next project as well, um, literally and figuratively started small and with a passion. So he sent me his data. Please don't read this. Um, you probably had enough Excel spreadsheets, uh, but basically this goes on forever. It's thousands and thousands of inputs, and um, I was pretty impressed that he actually took the time uh, to do this. It's a weekend passion. He's full-time at the, at the university, but this is his passion. So, um, so what I realize is, okay, I've seen this before. I've seen an Excel spreadsheet. I need to figure out a way to arrange this in a meaningful way, or at least a more interesting way, right? Um, data, when unorganized, is really annoying. Um, <laughs> the only thing uh, more annoying is probably staring at Excel spreadsheets. So, um, so basically, we had to arrange it in a new way in a .NET format. And that's so the uh, software I'm working with, which is actually developed here in Trento as well, um, can interpret the data. So the top half is going to be your nodes, and those are going to be the people who submitted uh, these samples. And then the bottom is the edge list, so that's actually how the nodes are connected. Okay, excellent, it's running. So we inputted that information. We're gonna pick a layout. And you'll notice, in just a second, the first node that we click on is actually Catalan, who's our hero. He's our storyteller, the guy who started this project. So he's actually kind of in the middle there. 
And you see he, he's, he stays in the center cluster, so he doesn't branch out as much. But we'll move on to Jean, which I guess his name is actually Jean, probably French, because you can see these outliers here are all former um, French colonies. And uh, so it's kind of an interesting way to glean some information without even knowing the guy. And um, then the next story, you'll see Yael and Vora. And, yep, yeah, right there. And the two places they visited are Israel and Palestine. So that's where they collected their samples. And uh, that's, that's a long story. We only have four and a half minutes left. So we'll finish up with uh, Claudio, who's the next node. And he obviously took a tour around the Caspian Sea, uh, visiting um, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, and Azerbaijan. Let's see. So that's it for the first project. Second project we'll talk about today in the next few minutes is Go Figure. And this project actually involves uh, photographs and football primarily. That's how it started. And you're probably wondering, why is an American on stage talking to a bunch of Italians about soccer? <laughs> um, <laughs> but it actually is a passion of mine. Um, I grew up playing. I, I was probably this tall, four years old when I started playing. And I still remember uh, my first World Cup in 1994, which is eight years old. And uh, that was kind of my window to the world. And that's the idea behind this project. He wants to use football photos, and uh, specifically these figurines. They, they measure just six centimeters. He takes photos with these figurines, we'll show you in a minute. Um, but he wants to tell stories with these figurines. He wants to show kids the world through football, because it's something they're already interested in. So the tagline is, it's not Van Gogh. I did I mention uh, he's actually from the Netherlands, so it's not Van Gogh. It's Van Boston, but as we're in Italy, I prefer it's not Botticelli, it's Balotelli. <laughs> <laughs> so this is who people are talking about right now, especially kids. Um, they love football, so let's use this as a teaching moment. Um, and so this is the project that, that Peter's putting on, and he, he kind of called and we talked and asked me if I could add another element, another dimension to the story. So that's what we're gonna try to do. Um, before that, we'll go through some of his some of his shots, which I think are really compelling and interesting. Uh, here you have Buffon. Um, this is from outside the stadium in Berlin in the 2006 World Cup, um, which brings us to Zidane. This was his most famous, or rather infam infamous, moment um, when he got sent off in the 110th minute for. Um, headbutting Materazzi, so this was actually a good moment for Italy. Um, <laughs> I say I ended up winning five to three. Um, but I thought this was quite interesting because Zidane, as a figure, um, both literal and figuratively a figure, he you know, gave people, you know, went to, to, to the world in some way, um, to Algeria. Uh, just like maybe Balotelli, maybe it's the first time some people have heard of Ghana. Yeah, I heard of Ghana because of the U.S. lost to them in the past two World Cups, but maybe, maybe some kids haven't heard of them. Um, I remember in the World Cup, uh, we played Colombia. It was the first time I had really thought about Colombia and put it on the map. So that was my window to the world. So that's what Peter's going to try to do with this project. Uh, this is the German team. I think this is the best story and the best photo. This is in the 1990 World Cup. Uh, right after the wall fell down and right before German unification. This is them marching towards the Brandenburg Gate. Very dramatic scene, but they won the World Cup that year, so that was the first time that maybe East and West could celebrate together. Um, you know, we have to mention Pele. Uh, this project is in its infancy. There's actually no data to report for this one, but it's going to culminate with next year's World Cup, which is in Brazil. So the idea is I'm going to try to help them create a similar network using the players. So basically, players are from all over the world. But for example, Brazil exports most of its players to uh, clubs all over the world because you know only 11 can play at one time for the Brazilian national team. So I really want to create a network similar to the one we did for the World Atlas of Sand for football and for the World Cup. 
So that's the next step. But if you have any projects, um, please feel free to get in touch, and uh, we can try to add another another dimension to it using data network analysis. So that's all I have for you. We have 10 seconds left. So thanks to the organizers. It's been an incredible day, and thanks for your attention.